<laughs> he's hard to contain himself. Wearing the WSL shirt, it is on. <laughs> Opening round, heat number four, went on hold uh, several times yesterday. Definitely worth the wait. Felipe Toledo, Kelly Slater, Nathan Hedge. It's really Felipe taking on a couple of old school legends. Kelly, 50 years of age, the greatest of all time, including the greatest ever at this venue. But Hedgie's got a great track record as well, competing here at Tehupo. Yeah, Hedgie, uh, the local from North Narrabeen at home, I've grown up idolizing him and 44 years old now and amazing to have him back here. His first appearance, he was back in 2004, around the time when, you know, Kelly was competing and uh, pretty amazing to think between uh, Kelly and Hoggy, they have nine perfect rides between them out there. The perfect wave, the perfect heat. That's happened a couple of times for Kelly Slater in his career. And a final uh, back in the day against Damian Hopgood. Also had a early round matchup with Keanu Singh where he got two tens. On a morning where he didn't really want to surf yet. He thought it was going to get better later. And KP sent him out there and he got two tens. He said, take that. <laughs> and moved on to the next round. An 11-time world champion who kicked off this year number one in the world which what he still calls the most meaningful win of his career. And he's got a lot of wins to think about, which really stands out. That was his 56th. I don't know if that record will ever be broken. Yeah, and Kelly has the best memory in the world. That uh, that brain, it can hold a lot of a lot of things, but to say that that win at Pipe at the start of the year was one of his most memorable or the most emotional, that was, yeah, that was really special to witness. You know, there was tears. I think we all felt it, just the uh, gravity of that situation. So. I cannot wait to see him today out here. I think it was an amazing call to hold off, and this heat especially is, is going to be a pretty special one, I feel. There's a lot of turning points in Kelly's career here in Tahiti. There is that famous drop into the pit where he leaned back and recovered against Bruce Irons when Bruce had had him comboed in the past. A lot of great heats, obviously, with John John Florence, one called maybe one of the best heats of all time, which finished in a tie break. They went to the single high score where Kelly had a 10 and John had a 9.9 .9 to decide who was moving on to the final. And <laughs> you just think back to those heats and uh, the ability and the way that they push each other. It's just, you know, falling out of the sky in, in one of the most dangerous waves in the world. These guys can make it look so easy and effortless. And that's what we're going to pick apart today. It is so not easy to actually swing and go on what is the most dangerous wave in the world. but. Yeah, these guys have just so much skill. Felipe Toledo wearing the yellow jersey. His personal best result in Tahiti is a semi-final performance that he had a few years back as we're expecting him to continue with his growth on this wave here at the end of the road. As we say a big good morning to Strider Wazalewski. We can't wait to see the first wave of the day. Oh my gosh, I'm like coming out of my skin right now. We got out in the water and we just big, huge barrels, Fahine. We saw Kaole, we saw Billy Kemper, we saw, um, you know, everybody, Owen Wright, just getting shacked across here. He's just having a good time. It's just the perfect tempo of waves right now to 15 to 16 second interval. It's just coming in. It looks like it's loading up and it looks terrifying, but then it's got that couple of seconds. It gives you that moment to get into it, but it's not a walk in the park. I've seen some tomahawks go down this morning. It's been amazing already. Strider, take us into the rhythm of the man we call Kelly Slater. I mean, he was in the channel this morning. He actually was still putting traction on a board. You think a lot of competitors typically do those things the day before, <laughs> you know, the event starts, not the morning of or a few minutes before your heat starts. Well, you know what? This guy wants to get things started. Who do we have here? Look at this. Nathan Hedge dropping in. He's deep. He's going to drive through this. He's still going. He's still going. Oh, he gets taken down by the foam ball monster. You guys, it is going to be one heck of a day. Kelly Slater's out the back, like you were saying. He's an animal. Showed up last guy, but he's in the heat. He's ready. Good man, Waz. What an effort for Nathan Hedge. <laughs> As you can see him having to let go of his board to get under that end section over the shallow reef and like strider mentioned from his view he had a lot of travel time laura there's a lot of things you can do in there when you're one of the best barrel riders in the world it's not just set it and forget it he really made a huge effort to make it to the channel yeah i love this from hedgy taking off so deep he's realizing that up against the greatest of all time he is going to have to ride that foam ball as long as he possibly can and if he'd been able to make it through this this would have been an incredible start to his heat but on that foam ball for what would have felt like eternity out there. Nathan Hedge, I love that from him. We're gonna see him go deeper than I think anyone today and that's what he's known for. 
Nathan Hedge getting the call up to surf in his 67th championship tour appearance. Really impressive to see what he did full time on tour. And that was a you know, fairly long time ago, 2001 through 2006. He was full time on the championship tour. But his last appearance here is a wild card, 2014. Not too far back. And he often is out here competing in trials events. Loves to sample the energy here at this crazy wave on the shallow reef. His first attempt, just a 1.17, just showing how dangerous he is as a wild card. A lot of great experiences as we think about just Tahiti for Nathan Hedge, making a final back in 2004. And it was a tough one for him. He actually severely hurt his shoulder. Uh, it was a pretty bad injury for Nathan Hedge. That was the final in 2004 with CJ, recovered to a semi-final to come back the very next year and went down to CJ's twin brother, Damien. Yeah, I, I feel like I remember that, like yesterday, watching he uh, Hedgey in that final and uh, dislocating his shoulder. That was really heartbreaking to watch and, and, and see that go down. But to be able to come back and in one year's time after dislocating your shoulder out here and, and make it all the way to the semis, Absolutely incredible work. It just shows Hedgie's fight. He's had so many cool turning points in his career. Remember, he had made a late charge to potentially re-qualify. Uh, found a, just a healthy lifestyle. I remember seeing him staying in Bolito. And I was like, Hedgie, are you making a comeback? And he's like, certainly. I'm staying by myself. I don't really need anyone to tell me what I should do or not. He had all the experience behind him and just had this clear focus, healthy, happy smile on his face, and he's kept it ever since. He's living such a pure lifestyle. He's a happy father, and he's ready to put on a great performance, as he already has in the morning. 1.17 certainly made a great run to try to make that tube to kick off the morning, as we can really enjoy some vintage, hedgy footage as we go to the afternoon flashback. Nathan Hedge from North Narrabeen. How is this performance, Laura? This is absolutely unbelievable. I will never forget this wave. Hedgy, an idol of mine growing up and watching him do this. One of his 10-point rides. He's had two out here in his career, but it was just amazing. A huge, gnarly West Bowl that he just fell out of the sky and rode like an absolute hog. <laughs> So great to see that performance is willing to charge and getting his spot into the event in 2014 by way of the trials. As we now lock in with Kelly Slater, great positioning, still traveling. Slater <laughs> extending the tube time. And what a way to start your morning for the 50 year old legend. He'll take the lead with that effort. Yeah, that was super cool. And just, I think we're going to see that from Kelly today. Like you're saying, maximizing that tube time, sticking that butt in the face to uh, really just get in there. So we see Hedgy. Nice lunge into the pit, and he will be cleared to exit. Short tube there, but fun to get the completion as we'll wait for scores from Kelly first, then to Nathan Hedge. Still at 27 minutes on the clock. I love that this opening round has 35 minutes. Renato Hickel planning on a gigantic day through the elimination round and trying to max out the best day in the forecast that we have here for the outer known Tahiti Pro waiting period. Toledo will hold priority as Kelly and Nathan are already warmed up. Yeah, it must just feel so cool for Felipe to be out there with these guys. They've had so much, you know, experience and time out here as we see Kelly so deep on the foam ball, just wrestling that thing. That was that was that felt good. New board. And then Hedgie as well, just lunging into this deep on the foam ball and uh, you know, smaller waves I think for these guys. We just want to get on the board and, and just get that feeling. This is by far the best day that we've we've had out here. You know, this whole month, I think. So for these, yeah, for these guys to get going must feel good. So Kelly, brand new board this morning. Strider's looking good so far. That board looks amazing. I think that like just, you know, the headspace that he's in to get out here in the water and, and feel a, a brand new board. He's just so familiar with his surroundings that he's just looking at things going, oh yeah, this feels right. And you know, to see him inside that barrel and to riding on that foam ball and you can see his board kind of goes sideways a little bit, but then it released. I think he's on a four fin. Uh, the way that the board, like a lot of boards when they catch that back fin on a tri fin will catch that foam ball and send you off the board. But the board released over the foam ball, which kind of leads me to believe he's set it up as a four fin. He's got futures on that board. Uh, a lot of guys using those 
of that fin system now just because of the hold that they feel and the base is more connected. Stratty, do you know how big that board is? He's on a 6-2. Uh, really, really good looking board. I mean, the, it's just super clean. Little side note, our uh, CEO, Eric Logan, brought that out for him this morning. Not bad. Great job. He, he's over there giving out jerseys, too. <laughs> he's doing a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> multitasking out there. And he, and he roasted me on my uh, Striders World Live this morning, so you might want to check it out. Oh, there he is. Elo himself, <laughs> Eric Logan, doing some great things for the sport of surfing, enjoying a great view from the channel. Great to see that all he's done in the last couple of years. A super fan for surfing, first and foremost, as he's enjoying the channel. The banter that goes on is classic. Uh, you hear everyone screaming and shouting and tell it, telling everyone who they're going for. Kelly Slater opens up with a 6.33 and a board he just waxed up right before he paddled out. Not a whole lot of surfers on tour will just take a brand new board without riding it and just go right into action. I remember Sonny Garcia did that a lot of times. He just have a brand new board and you just go win heats, just first take on it. Uh, certain surfers just understand equipment so well, they know if it's going to work before they put it in the ocean. Yeah, there's that magic feeling when you can uh, put a board on, under your arm and, you know, you do that little, like, shake, it's like, that funny little, like, up and down <laughs> <laughs> shaky thing, and you're like, yes, this feels absolutely amazing. And some, something about the weight, you know, here um, at this, especially this wave, you know, the boards are so refined for barrel riding and, you know, even for just how chunky the wave might be, if you're obviously not going to turn, it's just going to be a barrel board and something that's going to be able to help you knife into the wave. So for Kelly, he's, he's obviously felt that board and felt like it was magic. I remember Andy Irons used to do that with boards. He'd get so many boards at a time, even from shapers that he was just buying boards from. Um, if he didn't have sort of a team deal, he was just buying boards. He wanted to try everything out there. To have like 30 boards that he'd have to figure out before he's going on a trip. He'd just pick them up, go, nope, pick yeah. one up, yeah. <laughs> and he'd have like a yes pile just on feel. And he knew right away which ones he was going to take on a trip without even stepping on them yet. That's so cool. <laughs> Andy winning this event back in 2010 was a special one because he, uh, he hadn't won in a long time. It was here in Tahiti. So happy with that last victory of his career one of the best rivalries ever with Kelly and Andy over so many different seasons as Jordy Smith checking the morning conditions he's coming up next Griffin Cole Pinto and Jansen Andre will join the South African and I think that's this venue has impressed me the most for Jordy Smith how much improvement he's made and the waves he's had out here in the last few years are, are some of the best yeah, they really are. And, uh, you know, Geordie, even even watching him from the channel this year at Pipe, the way that he was able to just get so deep uh, and, and just so late under the lip, taking those steep, steep drops was so, so impressive. And I'm yeah, excited to see what he can do out here. He was looking very nice and relaxed last night at dinner, having some, some food with Nat Young. And uh, I know Griff, he actually came out here and got a, a pretty amazing bomb that he was glowing from uh, and absolutely buzzing. So, you know, uh, the contest finished like the wind finally uh, you know came good right on dark and there was a few bombs to be had there's a couple of different routes to being comfortable in Tahiti isn't there there's certain surfers that just have the natural instinct where they come here for the first time and you already know they're going to do well you think Griffin Cola Pinto Jack Robinson Bear Mamiya and that kind of crew and there's some surfers that come here and their first few results are are pretty tough but they put their head down to figure out how to perform well at the end of the road. And I felt like uh, Parco and McFanning uh, had a lot of critique in the early years coming to waves like this and one going left. Uh, but they got so good out here, shared a final together. Uh, Joel went on to win pipe, Mick made pipe finals, but they really had to prove themselves to the world and then obviously to themselves that they were one of the best that they could actually win this event. And it was special when they got to share the final out here together. Uh, packing big barrels. Parco to this day feels like he got robbed in that decision. <laughs> I love when those two are together talking yeah. about that heat. Yeah, they'll go back and forth on that one for the rest of, the, of their lives. But, uh, you know, it's, it is it is reps coming here. I think, you know, like you're saying, there are those people that have grown up just getting barreled and really have that comfort in falling out of the lip and, and knowing how to control, you know, their boards and what they're doing in, in big, heavy waves. Uh, you know, but Tahiti and this wave especially is it's something that you have to really understand and 
and really know how to pick the right waves. As, you know, we can see where the, where the competitors are sitting in the lineup. Hedgie's sitting way up deep. Uh, obviously, he's got third priority, so he's looking for something that could potentially run and, and give him even a, a smaller but very deep barrel. Felipe just sitting, waiting to see if he can get a bomb from the spot. What a great opportunity for Felipe to have priority with 20 minutes to go to look to get his first wave here. And it's going to be back to Kelly. Sliding in nice and deep. It's stretching out beautifully. Kelly comes out without a problem. Throwing a beautiful car. Two great completions for Kelly to take control of this opening round matchup. Wow, he is looking calm and comfortable. Smiles all around. <laughs> Back to Hedgy. Super deep here at Chelps, and he comes flying out. The wild card from Australia. Happy for this opportunity. Probably one to surf against an old rival in Kelly, remembering yeah. all the heats they would have had together in the early 2000s. Scores will be coming through. Kelly's second scoring ride felt like it was even a bit bigger than his start. Hedgie looking to get rid of a 1.17 as we still wait for Felipe Toledo to get involved. Yeah, still waiting for Felipe to get started, but uh, you know he's obviously looking for a wave that he, at, you know, at this moment wants to just really charge on. So he's got that priority. So he's obviously let that wave go for Kelly. Uh, you know, but but Kelly and, and Hedgie putting the pressure on and that can sometimes make you feel like you just, you know, want to sit and wait for the perfect wave or a certain type of wave. But, you know, with 18 minutes to go, he's going to want to get started soon. Felipe Toledo always recognized that this was a wave he wanted to improve on. There was a classic uh, era a few years back where he took an early trip here and felt the reef on his back and then turned in a semi-final to follow. Back to Kelly's wave, Laura. Yeah, taking off deeper up the point here and that was able to maximize this barrel. <laughs> so long, so well read, absolute amazing technique, falling out of the sky and just reading this and yeah, reading it to a tee. So special to see the greatest of all time in his happy place. As we see a great vision from in the water coming out with so much speed. That turn just felt so good after you get spit out of a tube like this, Laura. Yeah, so, so good. And, uh, you know, just putting on the brakes there, putting his butt into the face so he can slow down and just really, really just weave and play with this barrel. He is so used to doing this. He's no stranger to these situations. and. Just staying in there so deep, just just Kelly doing his thing like he never left. What a rhythm for Kelly Slater. He had so much going on in that tube. A mastermind able to extend the barrel ride and then Hedgie's wave, Laura. Yeah, Hedgie pumping the brakes there. Just a short one. I don't think this will uh, go into his top two, but just nice and wide. That one threw open. He could almost stand up in there, but uh, a shorter barrel for Hedgie there, but um, you know, just must have felt amazing just swooping in, putting his arm in the face here to slow down a bit and just getting nice. Going to live, an aggressive wipeout from the top. Wild effort as yep. that thing unloaded. Nathan Hedge throwing a Hail Mary at that one. Head pops up there, grabs his board. What a charger. His wave before a 5.0, he saw something in that wave. That's Just it. reminded of the dangers of this wave, how shallow it is, how willing you have to be to throw yourself over the ledge. This is what happened. Felipe made a paddle, but Hedgy tried to get there, jumping over the falls there. Had to press the eject button. He just wasn't in it. We thought he could get over that ledge, but this is what this wave does. If you're not under the lip, you are going over with it. Hedgie luckily just away from his board, but pin drops there. Hopefully did not hit the reef. Might just have a bit of a sore body tomorrow, but these guys are just going for it. This is what we're going to see throughout the day. And that is just the nightmare for these athletes getting hung up on a bomb like that. Hedgie just paddling back out, recatching his breath. What an effort for the Australian Charger. Strider, what did you see there? Just the way that he looked at the wave and there was a little back and forth that took him that nanosecond out of his paddle and it put him into the lip 
and he was in that situation where you're either going to go over the falls sitting on your board or you're going to stand up and send it and he had to do the uh the noble thing stand up and just go for it it was beautiful big stretched out wall it was really deep though i think they were a little too deep on that situation but what an effort beautiful to watch the hog send it and uh, I just can't wait to see some more action. It's just been amazing all morning. I think it's just going to get better as we get through this day. Well, Strider, it looks like Felipe's lost first priority. Did that happen on that wave when Hedgy was maybe thinking Felipe was going to go? Well, he took a look at it, and it was a solid look. So, you know, you, you've got a situation in the water. I think for Felipe, it's not a board. It's not, you know, positioning. There's nothing, any of that is playing into to today's surf. It's all in your head. Today's a headspace thing, um, you know. I was talking to Peter Mel last night when he went surfing. It was big and gnarly, and he was going no matter what in his mind. And when you get out here, you have to be going no matter what in your mind. And right now, Toledo hasn't done that yet. We'll see how that works out. I'm sure he's got to flip that switch, though, in this heat. Thank you, Waz. Felipe Toledo losing priority for not going on that last wave. Hedgy went over the falls, sitting a bit deeper as he's sitting in second. So Felipe combo to take the lead so far. Kelly out in front, 6-3-3 was his opener, built to a 7-5 on the second wave. Yeah, Kelly building nicely out there. And uh, I think back to what Strider was saying, you know, I think Felipe, he knows he wants to go. He knows he wants to push himself. Uh, but when those slabby waves come up and stand and draw below sea level, you have to be under it and you have to be in the right position. And obviously, you know, Felipe made a paddle there, but he was, he was too far out. He wasn't under it enough. So just a bit out of position, but uh, you know, unfortunately he's lost priority now. So he might it might give him the opportunity to free up and maybe try find something a bit deeper that's not as slabby, just to get a longer barrel and get started. 13:40 on the clock. Felipe actually spent some time with Kelly, uh, leading up to a pipe event in the past to take some notes from the greatest of all time. That one just slips right underneath him. But what a year it's been for Felipe. Five finals, two wins. Turning in some of the best surfing he's had to date. Always a favorite of Jay Bay for his domination in the past. Talked about maybe a subtle injury he had after that event as he was trying to be 100% physically entering the outer known Tahiti Pro. 13-10 on the clock. The GOAT putting on a show this morning. Of Laura Kelly Slater adding to so many records when it comes to every venue on tour. These days we talk about a lot of wins in the hollow waves on tour like Pipeline, like Tahiti where he's had his last couple. 55 win was here in Tahiti. 56 was at the start of the season at Pipe. But back in those days he was winning everywhere. Dominant lowers and high performance. These days with all of his experience you could still call him the best in the world at tube riding all the experience on this reef he knows exactly where he is at all times remember his foot exploded in a free surf at jeffrey's bay in 2017 so he missed this event two years in a row and then was taken out by jack freestone in big conditions when he was expected to win that was a massive win for jack he was super happy that he put on a big performance against the goat but Kelly was definitely disappointed to get a 17th. Doesn't happen too much for him at this venue. No, it doesn't. That was a, a rare loss for Kelly, but uh, yeah, a big moment for Jack Freestone there to take out the champ. But yeah, looking back at, you know, everything Kelly's achieved here is just unbelievable. Can you, Joe, can you imagine having s over 71, just in a contest, excellent waves <laughs> out at Te Hupo? <laughs> and he's had over 13 heats with 19 plus totals. Oh my goodness. So every record goes his way. The highest scoring surfer competing here in Tahiti and the only past champ in the draw this year. As we look back at the best score of the heat so far, 7-5 for Kelly. Yeah, absolutely love this from Kelly. You know, just staying so deep and so tight. That was uh, not a super open round barrel, so it was really, really well served. And he just knows exactly how to thread it. Stayed nice and high up there to just make it out. And just with classic Kelly style, we love those wraps. That board just, it looks quite small, actually. I'd love to know, you know, the exact dimensions on what he's riding out there, but, you know, Love to see the evolution of his boards over the last a million years. Yeah, I think it's a 6-2 uh, that he just got ready in the channel this morning. He's got his own surfboard company these days, and he works with a lot of different shapers. I remember when he first was starting his brand, he'd have a quiver 
and I'd be looking for dimensions on it. He's like, nothing to see there. He had a lot of little <laughs> secret missions he was on as we see him time traveling through the pit wow. again behind the spit, coming out with so much speed. Kelly Slater, three waves ridden, three perfect decisions as he is totally in control of this first seat of the morning was. Well, that was incredible, Slater. That was just, he said, how do you like me now after that one? <laughs> He's on fuego. He's just firing up. He's like got that feeling that, that, that Slater magic is happening. We're watching it live right here. I feel like there's a, you know, he's got that board. He felt it under his arm this morning. He said, this is the board. Uh, it's a four fin. It's all set up. Slater designs, you know, pintail, 6-2, uh, like you said, but just everything. Oh, get out of the way. Oh. Anyway, uh, I'm impressed. That was beautiful work by the 50-year-old. Did I say that again? The 50-year-old. And still impressing you, Strider. Oh my gosh, I think, you know, when you, there's people in your life that will inspire you, and this man is one of them. He just keeps doing it, and he keeps giving up to everybody else, and it's just one of those things that he was born to give to us, was the, the fountain of youth and, and the technique of, surf, of surfing and, and tube riding. Beautiful work, Kelly good, Slater. Good man, was Kelly Slater. Just dreaming right now, perfect tubes standing room only inside that pit. Yeah, no hand grab to take off there. That was uh, so impressive. He's just playing with it. He's like, what can I do now, hey? <laughs> I'm just always so impressed how much of the wall he utilizes inside the barrel. Uh, you know, I think you have this tendency to maybe freeze up at times when the barrel gets really dangerous and big and he has so much time to change his rail really high to avoid the foam ball and to come back down with so much speed. Looks like he still is getting better at his yeah. craft. He's so hooked on great waves. Whenever the ocean pops up and shows some big surf, he puts on an insane show. Kelly turns in an 8.5, improving on every decision this morning. And we were just talking about, uh, about it the other day, Joe, that Kelly is so good out here that he can actually see a wave and, and probably work out what the scoring potential could be from just looking at it and say, well, how can I fall out of the sky more to make this a, a bigger score. <laughs> he understands the formula so well, adding drama to sections. He said, well, if I airdrop, the judges will see that risk involved in committing to a wild section. The most successful surfer of all time has an 8.5 and a 7.5. And meanwhile, still waiting for an opening ride for Felipe Toledo. Remember, the number one seed hasn't been clinched yet for the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Jack Robinson stole the show yesterday in the last heat that was completed at a 9.43. He's the one gunning for that yellow jersey. We'll see how the scenarios unfold in this event. Yeah, no, I, it's it's Jack's to steal here, I think. But uh, you know, Felipe, with five min minutes to go, he's just want to get want to get something going, just to get a bit of confidence and just take it into the elimination round today. You know, 16 points with five minutes to go, it has been done. But I just think he needs to get something going to just get that feeling, uh, just get 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 a barrel. You were telling me yesterday, Laura, that sometimes if you ever feel like that, you just almost like a wipeout. Yeah, totally. Sometimes it's just better. Can you explain that a little further? <laughs> I mean, I always found it, uh, I don't know if this is a, a, a good thing to do or not, but if, if you just need to get those ner that nervous energy out of the way and just jump over the falls sometimes, just, just take a wipe out. Even if it's a smaller wave, just even get a set on the head. As we check out the heat recap, heat number four featuring the GOAT, Kelly Slater opened with a 6.33, then went to a 7.5 then to an 8.5 on a board. He just put the traction on a few minutes before this heat started. <laughs> I know, I wonder if the glue stuck properly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what an art watching him in backhand tubes. Hedgy absolutely charging. His best wave here, a 5.0. Yeah, Hedgy, so impressive. We knew he was going to go out there and just absolutely muscle into what we saw, the best wipe out of the morning so far. He is going to go for it. He will not hold back. He is like a lion. And that's where Felipe lost priority. Then Kelly drops into this bomb, deep on the foam ball. Absolutely threading this wave and uh, just looking so, so comfortable, effortless, playing with it. And just went to Strider and said, how do you like me now? Kelly Slater, 8.5, <laughs> 7.5, 16 point combined total to kick off the boarding. 
And for Kelly, it, it hasn't been just a, an all gravy year. After the huge win at Pipe, he's had some tough losses, you know, even going back to Sunset. He was number one in the world, had the awkward crossover and the interference in the overlapping format, a format that he designed, and he fell victim to that, that rule. Uh, then struggled with some tough, tough waves at G-Land, was knocked out early there, then started missing a few events. So it wasn't just this really clean read of success this season. And he was able to talk about, you know, the highs and the lows that you experience in this game. And so he's had a bit of both uh, throughout 2022. Yeah, professional surfing is a constant roller coaster, and I think, you know, we didn't actually know whether we would see Kelly compete in the whole tour this year after he won at Pipe. You know, some people were, were thinking, is he just going to, like, retire now on the win? But, you know, I, how could he miss Tahiti? <laughs> and he made a statement in the past. He's like, okay, people have to knock me off tour. You know, yeah. that's how he sees it happen, you know? And when you look at venues like Tahiti, like Pipeline, you hope he'll just have a forever wild card when he's surfing this well, where he's proving that he's still the best. It's so great that he didn't answer those early retirement questions, you know, the wrong way throughout his career. And I guess we do remind he tried to retire, you know, like after the 90s run of total domination, he took off 99, 2000, 2001. When he won this event in 2000, he was actually a wild card that year, not competing full time. Philippe Toledo looking like he's showing a bit of frustration out there at the moment, uh, just unable to get into position for that one. So frustrating times for him. And a loss of priority once again. So Hedgy first priority, Kelly now second priority. And Felipe in the back of the line, minute 50 to go. Tough moment for Felipe being world number one. Such a dominant season, five finals, two wins, turning in some of the greatest surfing we've seen all season. As we look at the loss of priority. Yeah, he did, Yeah, he made a paddle there. It wasn't much. He would not have got into that. But I think here, especially here in, at, at Tehupo, the, the judges are really harsh on if you make a single look into a wave, you're going to lose priority because it's too dangerous out here to fake it. Uh, yeah, so the judges are pretty, pretty, pretty harsh. And that's a, such a solid rule when it's a ledge and you're trying to maybe hang on to priority longer, they'll just make that quick switch. Yep. As we see a minute left on the clock, Toledo comboed in this opening round matchup. Oh. Nathan Hedge with priority is actually comboed for the win. And it's looking like Kelly Slater will just add more big numbers to his records here at the end of the road. And first wave with 50 seconds, Felipe Toledo will hang on to his rail to get the completion. And just probably feels amazing just not to paddle the channel without a wave. Yeah, he got a look under sure. the hood, made it. He'll get a score on the board and definitely have more of a warm up for the next round. Yeah, with a minute to go, he was like, I, I can't paddle in with zero points. Had to get the ball. What happened is not what he expected there, Felipe. So definitely feeling for him and he'll, he'll have to go back and analyze exactly what happened out there and his positioning. So a tough heat for world number one as we count this one out. Kelly Slater, complete domination with three waves, an 8-5 and a 7-5 to move right into the round of 16. Hedgie, the warrior, took the biggest beating this morning and leaves this heat with a 5.0 as his best as we're expecting bigger waves throughout the day real clean conditions to kick off the morning as kelly will paddle to felipe to talk that one over they've spent some time together talking about waves like this over the years like pipeline and also here at the end of the road we'll take a quick break when we come back griffin colapinto takes on jordy smith and jadson andre we'll bring in kaipo guerrero and peter mel for the call right after this